How's the communication been on offense? Um, it's been good. You know, I, I, obviously going on the road and having to deal with noise, you know, that, that will be a factor, obviously, with, with moving parts, especially on the offensive line. Um, so, you know, it, it's been good, but it's always a concern when you make changes, you know, with those five guys, and then when you're on the road having to deal with noise. So, um, you know, it, it's, 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 it's a challenge. And we're working on it all week long. It helps that Brian Gaia, who does most of the communication, is still at that position. Has a definitive decision been made on any of the guys coming out of red shirts? Yeah, as of right now, uh, there has been no changes. So we're still status quo with where we're at right now. I did meet with both these guys. I don't know if I told you this or not. Sometimes I forget which yeah. groups I, I did. Okay. How tricky has it been maneuvering people into different spots to kind of help make up for some of the injuries you got in the line? Well, we've been doing it for three years. I mean, I don't think it's ideal, but... Um, it's, it's, it's where we're at right now. So, you know, I know Coach Moorhead's been talking with the offense all, all week long about, um, you know, we got to find a way or make a way. And, and you know, we're going to embrace it. We've dealt with this on defense at the linebacker position. We're dealing with it, you know, right now on the offense with the offensive line. Um, so it, it is what it is. But we've been dealing with these types of things for three years. What types of things have you guys done with crowd noise? I'm assuming you're outside earlier before coming here. No, we've been in. We were in here all night long. Oh, really? Yeah, we were in here all night long. So, um, you know, we had we had the we had the music going earlier and uh, fight songs and things like that. But um, you know, we've been working on all year long. I, it's not like something right now that we need to overemphasize because we've been working on it all year. Long. What about your physical challenges as the season goes along? Less sleep, not feeling well. How tough is that in the coaching staff? Feel great. I feel great. You know, I, we, we try when we can to uh, make adjustments to the schedule when I, when I think the staff is, is uh, tired or, uh, or I think we're a little bit ahead of the schedule. Every once in a while we'll go 8 o'clock staff meeting instead of 7 a.m. 7 a.m. staff meeting, uh, things like that. Um, you know, try to do a good job with nutrition. You know, we're fortunate because they bring meals over for training table for us while we're watching film every single night. They used to bring dessert. Coaches got pissed off at me two years ago because I canceled the dessert. Um, probably should, that's for me because I have I have no willpower. If it's sitting there, I'll eat until I throw up. Um, so little things like that. I wear a weighted vest every single day at practice to try to get a little sneaky workout in. But um, a lot of the coaches, to be honest with you, a lot of the coaches you know get a workout in every day. You know, Ricky Ronnie goes early in the morning. Brent Pye and, and um, Brent Pye goes at lunchtime. He gets on the treadmill. Sean Spencer, as you can imagine, does curls um, <laughs> for about an hour. Um, but you know, that's guys do a pretty good job of that. And for the most part, we got pretty good eating habits, which which helps. Coach, this is maybe an out there question, but I remember you mentioning maybe last year that you majored in psychology. So I just want to ask you: Does that have any? Benefit to interacting with all the youth interact, all the different people you interact with as a head coach. Do you feel any benefit from having that degree? You know, I, I, would, I would probably assume that most people here, um, I bet you a lot of people here don't necessarily have degrees in journalism or wh whatever it may be, but you kind of fall into that. You do bet. I don't. Oh, you don't. Right. <laughs> um, He's got a psychology degree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess I guess probably more than anything is is just my curiosity in people. And in behaviors and, and what makes people tick and how people think, that probably helps in this job and being able to relate to so many different people. I think also my personal background of being biracial, all these different things, I think I'm able to relate to a lot of different people, a lot of different backgrounds. I think that's helpful. Um, so I, I don't know if I necessarily am like, you know, thinking about my psychology training from uh, Psychology 101, you know, 25 years ago. But I, I do think my interest in, in those types of things and reading books and talking to people, and uh, I think it probably does help just because you got so many different personalities and so many people from different backgrounds. Um, all those things I think help. James, what was the biggest thing you noticed you felt in the game with the receivers getting down the secondary and the deep balls? Because that hadn't happened that often all year. What was the biggest thing you've done this week? Okay. I, I will answer your question. I prefer to talk about Rutgers. I would prefer to talk about that on Tuesday. but. Um, I, you know, I think Indiana really had kind of done that against everybody. Um, you know, I, we actually felt like at corner and at uh, wide receiver, uh, Indiana was pretty skilled uh, on the offensive line as well. The one play 
they got us on tempo. Um, you know, we had we didn't get the call in. We were getting the call in as the ball was snapped. The next thing you know, the guy's screaming up the up the seam at us. So um, you know, the other thing is is you look at Indiana. They take a lot of shots. You know, they um, you know they we went into the game saying they're going to take a bunch of shots down the field. And I think it's no different than anybody else. If you're willing to invest, um, you're going to get some return on your investment at some point. So a combination of those things. But I think the tempo had a factor in it. Um, and I think you know, their quarterback, I thought, played really well. Um, you know, throws the ball extremely well. And I think they're, they're pretty skilled at wide receiver. But they had, they had kind of done that against everybody. So we had anticipated that a little bit. You had said earlier this year, that uh, preparing for top 25 teams different than a top 10 team. I think it was like before the Michigan game or something. Now that you guys have gone from a top 25 team to a top 10, what do you think you know been the difference with you guys in that stretch of four or five weeks? I think I think actually what I was just talking about, I, 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 what I said was I think there's there's in my opinion there's distinct di differences between being in the top 25 and being a top five. In my history, you know, um, the the difference between a top five team. And a 15 through 25 right. team, that that gap is dramatic. Um, so that that's kind of what I was talking about before, and and you know our respect for Michigan, and they were in that category when we played them. But now that you guys have kind of been there for a few weeks now in the upper echelon, what do you think has changed with you guys from going, you know, into the rankings to now? Yeah, again, I, I'm I'm not concerned about rankings or polls or playoffs. I'm, I'm concerned about Rutgers. And, Getting ready for that game, I, 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 that would be a question for other people. Um, you know, again, we don't. We just worry about Rutgers. We're worried about getting better ourselves. James, you mentioned Rutgers' offense is super multiple. Handling that defensively is it a matter of simplifying? We want to stick these X, Y, and keys, you know, or do you want to install more checks to kind of account for all the different looks? Yeah, I don't think the answer is more. You know, I think you know right now. I think you know our guys are playing fast and they're playing aggressive on defense, and we need to start trying to do more. Um, you know, you're going to have them thinking too much, especially if you play a team that does a lot. Typically, the old coaching rules: you do less, um, and and just make sure you're sound. Um, you know that that's something I think is important for us. They do a lot of different things in terms of empty formation into the sideline, um, uh, unbalanced uh, things like that. So yeah, we just we want to be sound. We want to have our guys aggressive. We want to have we want to have you know a plan that gives our guys a chance to be successful, but. We don't want to get into the check check game, especially because that's where the tempo can factor in as well. Yeah, you just ask me what you're thinking. On the varsity or on the scout team? Chris, I don't know. Oh, it was Michael Mennett? Okay, yeah. I guess it was Michael Mennett. I, I, I didn't know. Um, I don't know. We didn't change his number. So I don't know if that's because he bounced back and forth from scout team to varsity. Or, I didn't know he was in 70. I just uh, thought maybe he was wearing that uh, you know, spec. No. No, I, to be honest, I didn't even know it until you said it. So, I, don't, I don't know. Do you know anything about that, Chris? I'm guessing it's a scout team thing. Yeah, I don't know. Coach, uh, what are you guys doing to prepare for Darius Hamilton up front along the uh, record? Yeah, I think you know studying the film and being aware of him. He's been a very productive player there for multiple years. He's big, strong. He's physical. You know, obviously, we got some changes up front. You know, he, he's the guy that we've identified. We go in each week. I think I've told you guys this before. We kind of identify guys on offense and defense that we see as game wreckers. Um, the other guy is Audric, you know, the uh, half brother of the, you know, who played here. Um, you know, those two guys have been very, very productive players for us, and we try to do that. We identify guys each week guys that are game wreckers that we need to be aware of and, and make sure that they don't have a significant impact in the game, try to limit what they do a little bit. But he's you know, he's big, strong, he's physical. You better have your hands inside. You better have leverage. You better have, use your technique because um, he can overpower you. There's no doubt about it. In terms of the depths, uh, depth, excuse me, attack, where does Sterling fall in those rankings? How's he been in practice this Yeah, he's been good. Um, Sterling is a skilled player. There's, there's still some things. That you know the light needs to go on for him, but I, I met with him last week about you know I, I make the argument he's in the one percent, um, including the NFL in terms of body type, athleticism, strength. Um, you know, really he's got a lot of things you're looking for. He just needs 
you know, for the game to slow down for him and, and needs to be a little bit more physical, a little bit more aggressive. Um, you know, but he's, he's done a nice job this week. You know, I, I still think um, those other guys are ahead of him, very similar to what the depth chart showed that we put out earlier in the week. But, um, you know, he's done, he's done a nice job. I think right now probably uh, Brosnan would go in the game before he would at this point.